deeply grateful for this honor and opportunity to be with all of you once again in this holy place, the abode of Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev in the historical town of Nigri. Is everyone able to hear and is everyone able to understand? <laughs> Ask all your people to say Haribo. So many radios. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> In just two and a, two and a half days, we will be celebrating John Must. John Makar Machamedevam Evam Yoveti Tatvata. Sri Krishna tells us in Bhagavad Gita that one who understands the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities never takes birth again in this material world, but attains my abode. Srila Prabhupada and all of our previous acharyas have taught that when Krishna performs his lila and presents his teachings, they are for the ecstatic pleasure of the devotees who are present. They are for liberating the asuras who are also at that time re-establishing the principles of religion. But most of all, to establish a record through transcendental sound vibration where people for all time, in all places, can actually participate in Krishna's lila through the process of shravanam kirtanam, hearing and chanting. Krishna tells in Gita, Yegata mam prabhadyante tams tataiva bhajam yaham. Katiyantascha mam nityam tushyanti charamanti. Krishna tells that his devotees, they enjoy great happiness discussing his pastimes together, describing his qualities among each other. So through transcendental sound, by hearing and chanting Krishna's names, by hearing and chanting Krishna's pastimes, and by hearing and chanting about those great devotees who have surrendered their hearts and their lives for Krishna's pleasure and Krishna's service. According to our faith, according to the eagerness, in which we hear and chant, we can have direct experience of Krishna. Krishna's achintya, achuta, he's infallible, undefeatable, inconceivable. He is Parabrahman 
the Supreme Brahman. When Krishna performed his pastimes in Vrindavan, they were especially to attract our hearts. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tells that in all the Vedas, there are three principal subjects. Sambandha, how to reestablish our relationship with Krishna. Abhideya, how to act, to live in that relationship with Krishna. As servant of the servant of the servant. And Prayojana, through acting in Krishna consciousness, in the path of bhakti, how to achieve the ultimate goal of life. There are different stages of the ultimate goal of life. Parameti, Paramatmeti, Bhagavan, Iti, Shabjate. For those who are on the path of Jnana Yoga, they can achieve the goal of Brahman, realizing, having direct experience of the Supreme Lord who is unlimited, all-pervading, an infinite light that is inside and outside of everything. In that state, there is complete shanti or peace. Liberation from all the troubles, anxieties caused by the dualities of material existence. In this external manifestation of the material world, everyone is looking for pleasure. Ananda Mayo Pyashat. It's the inherent need of everyone to seek happiness. But under the covering of maya, the illusory energy, we're looking for happiness. In ways that inevitably bring us suffering. Under the conception, I am this body and I am this mind. We're trying to find temporary pleasures through temporary things. by trying to be controller, proprietor, enjoyer. Because everything's temporary, it inevitably brings us pain. And by the power of time, we must grow old, we must get diseased and die. That's the nature of the physical body. That's the nature of everything in this world. By the power of time, eventually the sun will burn out. All the oceans, rivers, and lakes will be dry. The planet Earth will just disintegrate into powder. And what to speak of our little bodies? In a few years, it will either be ashes or earth or the stool of some animals or insects. So Krishna comes to this world to teach us You're not this body. You're the eternal soul. Aham Brahmasmi. So Brahman realization is to understand I am spirit. I am not matter. To transcend all desires of this world. That is liberation in the impersonal aspect of the Supreme. For those on the yoga path, 
The goal is Paramatma, the supreme truth who is the Lord within the heart. Karuna Dakshai Vishnu Mahavishnu is the Paramatma of the whole cosmic manifestation. He's the Paramatma of creation. Within each universe, he comes as Garabodakshai Vishnu, the Paramatma of our universe. And within the heart of every living being is Kshirodakshai Vishnu, the Paramatma, the Lord within the heart. To realize that Lord, the infinite, supreme, all-knowing person, within our hearts is the goal of yoga. Bhagavan is the realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is declared in the Vedic literatures to be the highest of all realizations of Godhead. Brahman, Bhagavan, Paramatma, they are all existing eternally. Brahman is like the light, but Krishna is the source of the light, Bhagavan. Bhagavan has his eternal abode in the spiritual world, where he's eternally performing loving pastimes with those who love him as his servants. And it is that Bhagavan that descends into this world again and again. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chuduskritam dharma samstapanaradaya sambhavame yuge yuge. Comes as Matsya avatar, Kurma avatar, Varaha, Vamana Dev. Narasingha Dev, Parasaram, Lord Sri Ramchandra, along with Lakshman and Sita, appears as Lord Buddha, as Lord Balaram, and as Lord Krishna. And later on, he comes as Kalki. These are the principal incarnations. But the Srimad Bhagavatam tells there are so many incarnations of the Lord within history, it's like the waves in the ocean. That is Bhagavan, who comes out of his causeless mercy, out of his love for each and every one of us. Because the material world is a place for those who have chosen by our own sweet wills to turn our backs away from our loving relationship with God and to try to be a controller, a proprietor, and an enjoyer. Bhoktaram jagatapa samsarva lokameheshwaram. To be the controller, the proprietor, and the enjoyer is Krishna's role. On the path of bhakti, the ultimate goal of life is to love Krishna, to love Bhagavan. And the highest realm of realization, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, beyond bhakti is prema bhakti the intimate ex awakening of our eternal relationship with Krishna, ecstatic love. And on the realm of prema bhakti, the most complete, the sweetest, is braj prema bhakti, the prema bhakti that is eternally 
being shared between Krishna and the residents of Vrindavan. It is only once in a day of Brahma, which is over four billion years a day, another four billion years a night. So it's only after approximately eight billion years that Krishna personally comes to this earth planet to display his pastimes of Vrindavan. It's very durlabham, very rare. And the Srimad Bhagavatam explains how at the end of the Dwapar Yuga, just prior to the Kali age, in just once in a day of Brahma, Krishna appears in his original form of Shamsundar with his eternal associates. The Garga Sanhita tells that when Krishna was about to descend into this world, he told his Aladini Shakti, his pleasure potency, the origin of all love, the origin of all compassion, the feminine nature of Godhead, Sri Radha, that I am going to descend into this world in the, my original form. But I will not be happy without you. Please come. And Sri Radharani said, of course, I will go anywhere you go, anytime you go, but I will not be very happy without the forest of Vrindavan, the river Yamuna, and the hill called Govardhan. Krishna told Sri Radharani, that I have already sent Vrindavan Forest, Yamuna River, and Govardhan to the Earth planet. And we will be bringing our most intimate, loving associates, Nanda, my mother, Yashoda, my, I mean, Nanda, my father, Yashoda, my mother, Rishabhanu and Kirtida, your mother and father, and my friend, Sridhama, Subala, Sud Sudama, Stoka Krishna, Madhu Mangal, and we will bring our favorite cows and calves. Krishna comes with his eternal associates to perform such sweet, incredible pastimes of the spiritual world just to charm our hearts. Here we are, 5,000 years later, hearing the same subject matter. And when by the association of sadhus, saintly people, we develop faith in Krishna, faith that Krishna is none different than the Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is not different than his names. Krishna is in the heart of his devotees. Krishna can be discovered through our seva, our kirtan. Then just by hearing, we can experience Krishna. Once in a day of Brahma, after Krishna appears in his original form, he comes as Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna, tasting the sweetness of Radha's love and sharing that love without discriminating who is fit or who is unfit to receive it, which is the suitable place and which is the unsuitable place. Anyone, everywhere, who's similarly eager with faith to receive it, Lord Chaitanya is willing to give that braj Krishna prema bhakti. This is the gift Srila Prabhupada brought to 
for the people of India and the people of the world. When Krishna was just a little child, living in the forest of Mahaban, in the area called Gokula. He was playing so many little games with his friends. On the day of Janmashtami, I am sure you will hear a kata about Krishna's appearance in this world. He was born in the prison cell of Kamsa in Mathura as the son of Vasudeva and Devaki. And just after his birth, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, he was brought by his own instructions by Vasudeva across the Yamuna River and given to be the son of Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. Balaram had just appeared before him, just about eight days older. After some time when Krishna was playing with his friends, they were stealing butter and the gopis would come to complain to Yashodamai that your son Krishna is so mischievous. He and Balaram and his friends, they come to our houses very early in the morning before we milk our cows and they release the calves so the calves drink all the milk. And not only that, he comes into our houses And he steals our butter and our yogurt and our ghee. Sometimes in order to protect our butter, we put them in clay pots and hang them from ropes high in the ceiling. But Krishna and his friends, they get on each other's shoulders or they put grinding mortars and they under the pot, they push it, and then they stand on top of that, and then they get on each other's shoulders, and if they still can't reach it, Krishna has a stick, a special stick with a pointed end. <laughs> and he's on the grinding mortar on a boy's shoulder, and with his stick, woof, he, he makes a hole, and when the butter starts coming out, he catches it, and he distributes to all his friends, and they're eating and eating and eating. So much they eat, my our butter. And then when they're completely full, Krishna calls monkeys. <laughs> and now there's so many monkeys <laughs> screeching and jumping into our houses, and Krishna's feeding them, smiling so happily. Here, take more butter, take more butter, and the monkeys will eat and eat and eat until they're completely full. And now we have practically have no butter left, and whatever's left, Krishna throws it on the floor and says, this butter is so useless, even the monkeys don't want to eat it. <laughs> and sometimes when we hide our butter very, very um, carefully so he cannot find it, He'll go to our little babies and pinch them. <laughs> or put water on them. And then the babies start to cry and Krishna is laughing and laughing and run away. <laughs> Sometimes when he can't find our butter, he'll go into our temple room and he'll pass urine on the floor and run away. And sometimes we catch him with butter on him and everything, and we say, we caught you, we caught you. You are a thief. And Krishna looks at us and says, you are a thief, and he runs away. <laughs> One gopi, she caught Krishna. This is Krishna's aunt, 
auntie and said, we complained to your show to my so many times, but she doesn't believe us. Now I caught you. There's butter all over you. I'm bringing you to your mother, Yashoda. And Krishna said, I warn you, do not do this. <laughs> this little child. And she said, you come, you come, you are too naughty. And she brings Krishna by the hand and comes up to Yashoda Mai and says, you see, I caught Gopal. See how all my butter is on his face and on his body, I caught him. And Yashoda Mai looked down and said, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> and Gopi said, I, I, this, I caught Gopal. Look, I caught. And Yashoda Mai said, I don't understand why you're saying this. <laughs> and the Gopi looked down, and it wasn't Gopal, it was her own son. <laughs> The gopi was so confused. <laughs> How did that happen? And she apologized to Yashoda Mai. She said, I'm very sorry, I'm very confused. I, th I thought it was Krishna, but it's not Krishna, it's my son, I, I'm sorry. And then she was walking away, holding the hand of her son. And then she felt a little pulling in the hand, and she looked down, and it was Krishna. <laughs> Krishna smiled at her and said, I warned you not to tell my mother. <laughs> he said, if you ever tell her again, I will appear as your husband. So daily, gopis would come to complain about Krishna stealing butter, and Yashoda Mai would listen, and she would be enjoying hearing the pastimes, <laughs> and gopis would enjoy speaking the pastimes. In, but it was in the disguise of complaining. In Raghunathas Goswami tells that. Krishna enjoys more than hearing the most learned Brahmins chanting Rig Veda mantras, Upanishad prayers, the Samhitas. He finds greater pleasure hearing the great than hearing the Brahmins. His greatest pleasure is hearing the gopis chastise him. <laughs> because it is done with such intimate love. Gopis would say to Yashoda Mai, just see Krishna now. We are telling you all of the mischief of what he does, but see, he looks like he's so innocent. But we know that at this moment, he is planning st strategically <laughs> how he's going to come in our house and steal our butter next. And Yashoda Mai would look at Krishna and he would look so innocent that all she could do was smile at him. <laughs> she couldn't do anything else. She told her friends, the gopis, that I'll keep my son home if you really think he's stealing butter. They said, no, 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 don't do that. Said even when it's dark out in the early, early morning, his jewels, they light up the room so he knows where, where the butter is. They showed him, I said, I'll take off all his jewels. They said, no, no, don't do that. Because even without the jewels, he has an effulgence he can seize anywhere and I'll somehow keep them home. They said, no, no, don't do that. Because the only reason we make our butter is only with the hope that Krishna will come to steal it. If our hearts become soft like butter through hearing and chanting and serving the servants of the Lord, 
then Krishna will steal our hearts. That is prayojana. That is the highest perfection. To please Krishna so much by our patram pushpam palam to yam yome bhakta prayajjati. Through our offerings of love and devotion, when Krishna is pleased with us, his all attractive form, his all attractive pastimes, his all attractive name will steal our hearts. Since Krishna never really got chastised so much at this time by Yashoda Mai, by all the complaints of the gopis, the elder gopis, Krishna's friends, they wanted to see Krishna get chastised. <laughs> because they knew that by getting Mother Yashoda angry, her love would increase. And by her loving increasing, Krishna's love would increase. And by his loving increasing, she would get increased. So everyone was just, whatever they were doing in Vrindavan was only to increase each other's love for each other. That's the spiritual world. There's no envy. There's no false ego. There's no greed, no selfishness. Krishna's in the center. Everyone knows that we can have the highest, deepest, most profound love for each other when we're all united in giving pleasure to Krishna. So Yashodama is hearing gopis complaining, but one day, Balaram and the cowherd boys, they told Yashodamai, we have seen Gopal in a secluded place near the bank of the Yamuna. He is eating dirt. Now this was very disturbing to Mother Yashoda. Because if he's stealing butter, she knows that's very good for Krishna. <laughs> but eating dirt, that's very bad for Krishna. Children cannot eat dirt without becoming sick. So she said, Krishna, why are you eating dirt? Krishna said, Mai, I did not eat dirt. He showed her Mai. She said, but all your friends are telling me that they saw you eat dirt secretly. Even Balaram, your brother, whatever mischief you do, he does with you. All the complaints of butter stealing, it's Krishna Balaram together. Even Balaram is stating that you have eaten dirt. Krishna said, they are telling lies. <laughs> they are upset with me, so they are speaking lies against me. And Yashodamai turns to Balaram and the cowherd boys and they say, he is speaking lie. <laughs> so now it's becoming confusing. Yashodamai said, if you actually haven't eaten dirt, then let me see in your mouth. And Krishna smiled. He said, I have not eaten dirt. And to prove it, look in my mouth. Look deep in my mouth and see. But actually, he did eat dirt. <laughs> but he didn't want his mother to see the dirt in his mouth. So he opened his mouth. His mouth was only this big. He was only a child of about two or three years old. How big a mouth does he have? And Krishna was playing the role of an ordinary child. He would do things so ordinary. So ordinary that Mother Yashoda was thinking, Krishna's completely dependent on me. So she looked in his little tiny mouth. She saw the universe. She saw all the mountains, the oceans, 
that all the demigods, all living beings, she saw the personification of the three modes of material nature. She saw all the subtle earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and ego, all the different subtle material energies of the whole cosmic manifestation she was seeing in Krishna's mouth. Brahmanda. How big is the earth? How big is the universe? And how big was Krishna's mouth? Now Vamanadev, when he wanted to cover the universe, when he was begging from Bali Maharaj, Bali Maharaj said, I will give you whatever you like, tiny little dwarf Brahman. And Vamanade said, just give me three steps. The amount of land that my three steps can cover. Bali Maharaj said, I can give you so much. I'm the, I've conquered the world. I've conquered the, up to Swarga Loka. You don't ask somebody so big for something as three steps of land and your steps are so small. Vamanadev said, you are a great king, and you have conquered the world. And I'm just a little Brahmin beggar. I don't have any possessions, but I'm happy, because I found peace within myself. But you're not happy, because you can't have not found peace within yourself. I don't need anything. Just give me three steps. And Bali Maharaj said, take three steps. And when he said that, the little tiny Vamanadev started growing right before Bali Maharaja's eyes. He grew bigger and bigger and bigger. He was so gigantic in size, we can't even conceive of it. With one step, he covered from Patala Loka to Swarga Loka. With the next step, he went all the way beyond Brahma Loka. And he cracked the covering of the universe, and Ganga started flowing in. And then Vamanadev became a little dwarf again, and he said, you promised me three steps, you only gave me two. And he tied him up <laughs> and arrested him. And Bali Maharaj said, I, I, I surrender to you. Please put your third step on my head. So to cover the universe, Vamana became really big. But Krishna, so sweet, he, had, he brought the whole entire universe in his mouth, and his mouth didn't even grow. And his, she was seeing it through his mouth and his stomach, and his stomach was still a little tiny child-sized stomach. This is inconceivable. This is materially impossible to even calculate. How can you put such an enormous amount of earth and mountains and oceans and all living beings and all energies and all demigods in a mouth that's only about three inches in diameter? That's Krishna. Yashodamai is seeing the Brahmanda in Krishna's mouth, and she's bewildered. Krishna can show her this opulence, but by his Madhurya Ras power, it did not disturb her motherly affection. She did get philosophical. She was thinking, who is my son? What is this I'm seeing? He's not ordinary, and who, and who am I? Under the illusion of Maya, I'm thinking that Nanda Maharaj is my husband, and because I'm his wife, Therefore, I am Brajeshwari. I am the queen of Brindavan, and all the Brijabhasis, and all the cows, and all the calves are my subjects. 
such an illusion of Maya I'm in. And I'm thinking, Krishna is my son? But at the same time, she couldn't accept this because of her motherly affection. It would interrupt her motherly affection if you think your son is God. So she was thinking, maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe this whole thing is just a dream. But then she decided, my eyes are open. And she pinched herself. She said, my eyes are open. I'm seeing everything. I'm awake. I'm not dreaming. Maybe, maybe I'm mentally unstable. No, that's not possible because I'm doing all my household chores very nicely and I'm very mentally stable. Maybe, maybe just like I hear Nanda and the Gopas, sometimes they tell me that Gargamuni, he came and did a secret name-giving ceremony and at that time he told that my little child Krishna is as good as Lord Narayan, the supreme personality of Godhead Bhagavan. But how is that possible? How could he be Narayan? How could he be some great powerful soul? When lightning strikes during a rainstorm, <laughs> Then Krishna, he becomes so afraid. He comes running to my he comes running to my bed and he's crying, crying, Mother, please protect me, protect me. And he won't stop crying until I embrace him and I say, Go, Paul, everything's all right. Every, I'm with you, I'm with you, and oh, you're with me, okay. And when Krishna's hungry, he cries until I feed him the milk from my own breast, then he's perfectly satisfied. And he steals butter from gopis. Narayan is the proprietor of everything that exists. He doesn't have to steal. And when then they complain against him, he lies. The absolute truth doesn't lie. <laughs> so though these people, they're very mixed up. They're thinking my son is as good as Narayan. Narayan is not like that. Let Gargar Muni say whatever he wants and what any, let all these Brijabhasis think whatever they want. But Krishna knows that he's only my son. And I know that he's only my son, and I am his mother. And when she was thinking like this, her natural motherly affection became so strong, and Krishna was so pleased by her motherly affection that by his own sweetness, by his own smile, she completely forgot everything she just saw in his mouth. Krishna was sitting on her lap the whole time, and he, she embraced him and fed Krishna her milk, and Krishna drank the milk like nectar, so happy. And she was so happy. This is Brindavan. The supreme truth. Aham sarva sya prabhava mata sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samandataha. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells, I am the source of all spiritual and all material worlds. Everything emanates from me. Janmad yashayataha. The Brahma Sutra tells, the absolute truth 
is from whom everything emanates. Krishna says, the wise who know this perfectly engage in my loving service and worship me with all their hearts. In Vrindavan, these truths are revealed. The secret of all secrets of the Vedas, how the all-powerful is overpowered by the love of his devotee. How the source of everything that exists is seen to be my child, my intimate loving friend, or my lover. This is John Mastery. There are many appearance days of many avatars which are supremely holy. And by remembering, we become purified and awaken our love for Bhagavan. But particularly John Mastery is the appearance of Swayam Bhagavan. Krishna's to Bhagavan Swaya, the Krishna of Vrindavan, where Krishna reveals these pastimes that are actually the pastimes with the same personalities as in Goloka Vrindavan, the spiritual world. Yashoda, Nanda, Vishaka, Lalita, Sri Radharani, Sri Dhamma, Subala, Sudama. They are eternal associates of Krishna. And those perfected beings within this universe can enter into the pastimes of the Lord and actually learn from them. What a beautiful thought to learn how to love and serve Krishna from Srimati Radharani, from Mother Yashoda, from Sridham and Subal. That is the Vrindavan of this world. Janmastami is a day where we really cultivate a sense of gratitude. Krishna has come on this day. And Srila Prabhupada taught us that actually, whenever a devotee remembers Krishna, chants Krishna's name in a mood of true surrender, comes before the deity in the temple, Sri Radha Govinda Dev, with faith and devotion. There's a John Mastery, Krishna's appearing within our heart. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through his Sankirtan movement, he has taught us that if Krishna is in your heart, your heart is Vrindavan. And Krishna will perform his pastimes within, his, within your heart, when our heart becomes purified. Jeto tarapana marajanam bhava maha devakti nirvapana. Through chanting Krishna's names, through hearing Krishna with great eagerness, we purify the mirror of the mind or heart. And when the heart is truly cleansed of lust, anger, greed, envy, arrogance, and illusion, through seva, 
Srila Prabhupada and our Acharyas taught that the most power, that the mind and all the senses can be controlled if we can simply control the tongue. We control the tongue not by chanting prajalpa, mundane subjects that have no real service to the Supreme Lord, that are disconnected from our own spiritual nature. But when we speak Krishna's pastimes, when we speak Krishna's teachings, when we chant Krishna's names, the, through the tongue, our whole consciousness, our life becomes pure. And the other function of the tongue is to taste. People are so fond of tasting so many things. If we simply learn to taste and appreciate prasad, just by taking prasad and chanting the holy names according to the directions of the great acharyas, we could cleanse our hearts. And as our hearts become clean, Krishna reveals himself to us. Many years ago, I first came to Nigri. It was at Gopalacharya Prabhu's house. His wonderful family, Mukara Devi, his incredibly loving, devotional wife, his children. They love to cook for devotees. Vrindavan Prabhu, Radhe Shyam Prabhu, Krishnananda Prabhu. They would sometimes come to his house and he would invite his neighbors, and I would come. And we considered it really an expanding congregation when we filled up the little room in his house. That's all there was. Ladies would be in the little side room cooking and cooking and cooking. They would be crowded in there cooking so many wonderful preparations. And I would come sometimes, and I would be doing kirtan, and, and other people would be dancing, and sometimes I'd speak some Hari Kata, and people would, be, and other devotees would come, and it was, it was like the center of the universe, one little house in Nigri. And then something happened, amazing. It got so many people were coming that they were going in the uh, the other little rooms of the house and listening, and some were even outside leaning in the windows to hear. And that's the way it was for a long time. And we never imagined anything else could be here except the home of Gopalacharya. How many of you raise your hands if you've been to the home of Gopalacharya Prabhu? Mukara Devi. Sometimes when I would come, they would have larger programs, and we would go to the Krishna temple. Yes? And when we came to the Krishna temple, there would be some, sometimes like a hundred devotees. This was gigantic, it was enormous. A hundred devotees in this little town of Nigri, nobody could believe it. And the kirtans were like no other, anywhere. Everyone was so, so enthusiastic and simple at heart. They loved to dance and they loved to chant. And they loved to hear about Krishna. And we didn't have radios in those days. <laughs> Krishna Nanda Prabhu would always be sitting right here. 
and I would speak a line, and he would speak a line, and I would speak a line, and he would speak a line. <laughs> and I would say something very serious, and he would translate, and everyone would laugh. <laughs> Sometimes I'd say something that I thought was very funny and everyone would look at me like, oh. <laughs> Total quiet, like, oh, that, that's very serious. <laughs> and I'd ask some people who understood Marathi, Hindi, English, I'd say, is he saying the same thing as me? And they would not answer me. <laughs> I'd ask again, is he saying the same thing? <laughs> He'd say, he's saying the same things, but he would, sometimes he adds extra things. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably doing that now. <laughs> I will never know. <laughs> now you have radios, so it's very different. <laughs> so at the Krishna temple, there would be a hundred people and when different, I was living at Radha Gopinath Temple in Chopati, Mumbai. And devotees, whenever there was an event at Nigri, everyone wanted to come because they knew that was the most blissful. Because everyone loved to dance and chant at the Krishna Temple. And I remember sometimes I'd bring people from other countries from America, from London, from Russia, from Europe, from different countries, Australia. Oh, they were amazed. They said, this is the sweetest kirtan I've ever been to in my life. And these are Prabhupada disciples, God brothers, God sisters, so sweet. And soon it was becoming 200 devotees. And then, they, and then all of you decided to have Ratha Yatras. Amazing Ratha Yatras. <laughs> Quite simple, but spiritually opulent. And gradually the idea came to make a temple in Nigri. Yes, first there was a little ashram. I think you've got some cows, yes? little ashram, a couple brahmachari, some cows, started making a lot of prasad and giving it to people. And some people were thinking, this is very difficult to sustain. And now one of the most wonderful, beautiful temples in all the world. With ins with And tonight, just, just any old night, uh, how many people are here approximately? About 3,000 people. <laughs> I, I just want to thank you, and I want to congratulate you. As Sri Sri Radha Govinda Dev, Krishna has really appeared in a beautiful form. And all of you have provided for him a wonderful, magnificent, beautiful home. Many brahmacharis. Wonderful congregation. Everyone serving together. But the one thing at the heart of the devotees at Nigri, however small or however large in numbers, is the specialness of your enthusiasm for kirtan. Now let us celebrate 
the coming of Janmashtami together performing Nam Sankirtan. Thank you very much. <laughs>